This is Twit. Oh. <laughs> Starliner. Uh, yeah, I put this on. Helium I- leak. So now to be fair, helium is very slippery stuff. You know, it, it, it leaks more easily than anything else because it's yeah. the, the lightest element. And um, well, hydrogen is the lightest element. element. Also oh, hydrogen. I'm sorry. You're right. Helium is dex. Um, so this was, uh, you know, not unknown in the shuttle days and so forth. But uh, what's the latest on Star? Yeah. So when we last Hi. talked, <laughs> right. Yes. When we last talked, uh, Boeing and NASA and ULA had delayed the launch of Starliner to no earlier than May 17th. Hey, that's as the, the, that's recording day um, because they had to fix and replace a helium relief valve on the upper stage of the Atlas V rocket. And apparently in the days since they were doing that, they have now delayed the mission further to no earlier than May 21 uh, due to a helium leak on the service module now of the Boeing capsule. So now we've got two different leaks on different parts of the the launch system. uh, And we actually have not heard anything else actually, as of we started, as, as, as we started recording this, I did check uh, about what the next stage is going to be because that delay was no earlier than the 21st, but there is some talk uh, uh, you know, around that they might in fact be delaying into uh, Memorial Day weekend, which would be interesting. Uh, but uh, I, again, we're still waiting to hear something. I suspect that after we get out of recording this episode, we are going to get some sort of update from NASA to say, "Hey, Boeing needs more time to fix this leak," uh, or they need more time to check both the fixes for this leak and the fixes for the ULA uh, ULA uh, leak. And then we'll, we'll figure out what's what. The reason I think they've got to say something is because it's Friday. Uh, the launch is no earlier than Tuesday. And I think the crew is still in Houston right now. So they have to get back to, to KSC uh, and then start all that final countdown. L minus two, which is when NASA starts all their big uh, activities, is um, would be on Sunday uh, as we're recording this. So, so I'm not sure what's going on is what I'm trying to say. But the new leak, another delay. Hopefully, uh, uh, a launch next week, but uh, it could slip into the holiday weekend. Well, and not to sound suspicious, but the bad news press release or uh, press conferences always seem to happen on Friday afternoons late. At, at four o'clock or five press o'clock press or yeah. six o'clock or seven Eastern o'clock. time. <laughs> All right. Next up, Blue Origins at it again. And yeah. this, this is a very special launch because somebody's going up that should have gone up a long, long time ago. At least someone's launching this weekend, right? That's right. So Blue, yeah. Blue Origin, actually, uh, the uh, they their new Shepard suborbital rocket, not going to orbit, is right. actually making a return to flight uh, for the first time with an astronaut crew. Uh, for those who don't remember, uh, back in 2022, and I think it was September of that year, they had a failure of an uncrewed launch. There were no no, no astronauts on it. Their last astronaut flight was in August of 2022. Uh, and then they returned to flight in December of last year, December 23, uh, with an uncrewed launch. So this is their first return to form for passenger flight. And they are launching a a very interesting group. Chief among them is Ed Dwight, a former U.S. Air Force uh, pilot, the first black astronaut candidate in 1961. He uh, underwent training, was recommended by the Air Force as an astronaut candidate to Mm -hmm. NASA in 1963, and then he was never selected to fly and ended up leaving the Air Force uh, for for, like business world, and and he eventually became a sculptor in uh, 1966. Uh, And so finally... He is getting that chance to fly. And if, if you hadn't seen it, he is also the subject or one of the subjects of the Space Race uh, documentary by National Geographic that came out uh, earlier this year in February. Uh, but he is one of six different passengers who are flying. The, the rest are either um, uh, a big entrepreneur and in, investors like Mason Angel. Uh, there's a, 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 a French a brewer, Sylvain Chiron, uh, as well as uh, other entrepreneurs, uh, Gopi Thadakura, uh, Ken Hess, and adventurer Carol Schaller. Uh, and they will all be launching on uh, the new Shepard rocket. And I believe their RSS first step uh, capsule, which is the one that they've been using for these crew flights, although I know they were building another one, uh, to get a few minutes of, of weightlessness, they'll bring the, the booster back and land it, and uh, hopefully kick off another slate of these uh, these crewed flights, these space tourist flights. They get about 
four minutes of weightlessness uh, up in uh, uh, on the flight itself. They have these giant windows, the biggest windows ever built for a spacecraft, uh, and they can float about the cabin. And uh, apparently it's a great experience, as we've all heard William Shatner say, and it'll be very interesting. But that launch is Sunday, May 19th at uh, 9.30 a.m. Eastern time is the opening of the window. It could be a little bit later. They've usually uh, targeted like a one to two hour window uh, for that. So. And those two stories are on space.com. And I'll just add uh, in Ad Astra, we just by happenstance did a story that included uh, Ed Dwight for yeah. the issue that's coming out in a couple of weeks on black right. astronauts. And uh, he was quoted as saying that he had a very difficult time at Edwards, primarily because of his relationship with um, Chuck Yeager. Really? Because Yeager was, was, did not treat him well. And Yeager's uh, immediate assistant, had had written comments saying, look, Dwight's as qualified as anybody here, but it just didn't move forward. Interestingly, part of the motivation for this, because this was 1960-61 after all, which was not the most inclusive time in the United States, but uh, CBS newsman Edward, Ed, Edward R. Murrow had written to James Webb in 1961 saying, you need to fly somebody of color on this spacecraft mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. that's most of the world and you're, you're, you know, you're not including people. So I thought that was an interesting tidbit. All right, uh, private mission to save the Hubble Space Telescope raises concerns at NASA. Now, I just have to say, when I heard this, I thought, what a cool idea, at, you know, year, year two ago, whenever it was that it was first brought up by the, the Polaris Dawn team. But when you think about how much training and simulation a NASA astronaut did in the neutral buoyancy tank and other facilities to work on the Hubble with a shuttle standing on the end of a robotic arm or, or, or at least having the Hubble grabbed and brought into the shuttle and, and fixed there while they were working on it, that's very different than getting near it with a SpaceX capsule and then drifting over in a brand new untried EVA suit and trying to do basic repairs. But it sounds like it might be kind of a plug and play thing. What do you know? Well, well, so the, the, it's very interesting that you say that. And by the way, it wouldn't be hopefully a, 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 an unproven uh, a crew suit because the the next the, the next Polaris Dawn mission is supposed to prove that 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 spacesuit mm -hmm. uh, uh, coming up. But this is a story from NPR by the very talented Nell Greenfeld Boyce, who saved my bacon once at uh, at the KSC when I locked my keys in the car during a shuttle mission. So uh, uh, you know, I, I have. I can I can't thank her enough for everything plus her amazing work as as a science writer. Uh, but she has this great story about the Polaris Dawn mission that you mentioned in there, uh, which is uh, actually a set of three different missions uh, that are being financed by uh, billionaire Jared Isaacman. Uh, he was also the person that that bought uh, SpaceX's first private Inspiration One uh, flight and and flew four civilians uh, on that mission uh, to make some history for the first private orbital flight uh, fully on its own spaceship. Uh, now he's going to launch uh, and do the first private spacewalk on his next flight, which is sometime this summer. And after that, this, the the second Polaris Dawn mission that he wants to do, uh, he has floated the idea of rescuing the Hubble Space Telescope. Now, Hubble, actually, it's been five years since, uh, uh, five years? Ten years. Ten, fifteen. Pardon my gosh. I forgot where time went. It's been 15 it's years since since the, the last servicing mission to the uh, the Hubble Space Telescope, and the, I realized that because my daughter was born that year, so I should really remember. Uh, and and you know the 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 systems are designed to be upgraded over time. NASA went like every five or six years uh, during their, their the, sh the shuttle missions to upgrade it, and the the one in twenty um, what was that twenty two two thousand and nine was supposed to be the last, and so. He has said, "Hey, we could we could go there. We could we could dock or rendezvous with it. Uh, it does have uh, like that kind of like universal adapter, I believe, uh, to, for that kind of a thing. And we could upgrade whatever you want. You just gotta to help us figure it out. And initially, it seems like, hey, yeah, free servicing mission. Let's let's do it. Let's figure out. Let's let's find the way to get to yes. Uh, but what uh, Nell's investigation shows, and she actually had to FOIA." Uh, emails and discussions about the mission uh, because uh, Jared Isaacman has been saying, you know, publicly, hey, we really want to get there. You know, we 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 think that we could. Um, uh, it's it's an easy decision. You know, it's a no brainer. He's quoted as saying, uh, but NASA has been saying that that you know maybe we'll give you an update in, in spring or, or early summer. Uh, and and now it's as of this week and this story. You know, they're saying that hey, maybe they'll share something this week. The concern that came up through these emails is not that. 
you know, SpaceX and Isaac Min and his team couldn't do it. It's that they're worried that this this 30 plus year old space telescope, which is kind of near the end of its life, it actually went into safe mode earlier because of a gyroscope failure, uh, that it is still performing science as it is. So if it's not broke, we you know, we, we don't need to fix it. Uh, and 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 so what if this this you know quote unquote untrained team of private astronauts what if they broke something like what happens right. then like we could get maybe like a couple more years 20 30 four maybe i think is where they think it's going to it's going to die um they could they could last through there and if they if they do everything perfectly well then hey they could get another 10 years out of it but if they break something critical uh, then, then that's it, right? Shows over. And I should point out that in 2009, during the STS-125 mission, there was a really, there were two scary moments. Number one was there was a, a stuck bolt and they couldn't get the wide field camera out, the old one, to put the new wide field camera three in. And it took quite some doing uh, on, I think, the first EVA for them to get that one done. And that was like one of the critical success me uh, measures of that mission. You know, if they couldn't get that thing open, um, what are they going to do? And you had a whole back room to figure out. They got to get that bolt open. Uh, they replaced the camera and it was great. Uh, will a private mission like this have that kind of support? Will they be ready to deal with that kind of stuff on the fly? Those are the concerns that they're talking about. And John Grunsfield himself, the, uh, the Hubble hugger, you know, is, is, is in, you know, quoted in these, these emails as kind of being a bit, a bit uh, opposite of this, this effort right now uh, until they could figure out if they could actually do it. And I think that's the, the, the 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 big concern here it doesn't sound like it's done like the discussions are done it just seems like there's opposition to or resistance which we've seen a lot in the past when it comes to private missions but this is kind of an an an, un, an extra type of a thing it's not nasa soliciting out ideas for a commercial company uh to come up with ways to service hubble it's someone saying hey we're going to fly a mission. Do you want us to go to at home? our expense? Mike. Exactly. Yeah. We're going to fly a mission. I'm going to pay for it. Do you want, do you want us to go do this thing? If so, how could we do that? So it's going to be interesting to watch how it comes out. You know, we've, we've seen similar situations when the, uh, uh, the NRO just gave NASA some space telescopes <laughs> that they had lying around. And then it was like, well, what are we going to do with them? And then they, they also, they almost canceled those missions until they named it the Nancy Grace Roman space telescope and now it's it's going to fly those those w first uh uh, uh oh, observatory so yeah so that's kind of where what a tortured story w first was yeah, yeah. by the way i, I want to mention uh for the fourth servicing mission they did develop the soft capture and rendezvous mechanism which was installed on the back end of the hubble so you're yeah. right they do have a capture so they it's, like, it's a capture ring they could dock and then boost it that's like very limited. SpaceX has a lot of things. Isaac Min, he says that he's he's worried about the amount of time being just taken just to discuss this because they do have to, if they're going to do it, if right, NASA wants them train. to do it, they have to start talking about it now. And he said in this piece, I am a bit concerned that the clock is being run out on the game so that there's not going to be a Hubble to save. Basically, they'll, they'll spend so much time hemming and hawing that, you know, it's too late. It's too late. You know, the sale's over. And, uh, and you don't get, you don't get your free, your free mission. So, so we'll have right. to see. This isn't the first time it's happened either. When SpaceX launched the first Falcon Heavy, uh, SpaceX and Elon Musk offered to fly anything for free for NASA. And Instead they said his no. car. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so, so we ended up launching his car. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out This Week in Space. You can find us on your favorite podcast app or see the link in the description below. See you there.